All right, hi everyone, and welcome to this week's product training with Blue Triangle. Today we're going to talk about the tag and content governance module in Blue Triangle. Uh, we built this module specifically to help you manage the tags and content on your site. Today we're going to cover everything from how to inventory the tags and services on your site, how to manage service profiles, and how to create SLAs for specific services and more. All right, so my name is Mark and I'm the support manager here at Blue Triangle and we do these training sessions each week about various topics related to web performance, analytics, and ultimately how to use Blue Triangle to solve problems. So let's go ahead and get started. As far as the agenda today, we're covering the tag and content governance module. And while there's a number of features and functionality of this module, um, I just wanted to highlight uh, some of the initial things you'll be doing if you're new to the module or new to tag governance in general. So the first thing is how to inventory the content on your site. Now this is kind of a trick question because Blue Triangle, as a matter of fact, actually does this for you automatically. And I'll show you how to view that data in the Blue Triangle portal here in a second. Uh, the next thing is managing service profiles. So service profiles are a place to assign ownership to services and save information about that service. And we'll show you how that works in a second as well. And the next thing is we'll touch on how to configure and monitor SLAs um, for a particular service or a particular um, piece of content on your site. So there's a configuration that we'll walk through as well as a, a dashboard that we'll show you for that as well. The other thing is we'll talk about missing services alerts. So these are alerts that will uh, notify you whenever a tag or service isn't is no longer loading on your site. So these things are all uh, important parts of getting started with tag governance and uh, so we're going to walk through um, each of those today. And the last thing is, of course, uh, we'll save some time toward the end of the session to go through any questions that you guys had uh, while we made our way through the session today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Blue Triangle and we'll get started. All right, so here we are on the Tag Governance Overview page. I'm just going to walk you through this page quickly and just kind of give you an idea of uh, what the overview looks like. So before we even get to there, where we are in Blue Triangle right now is inside of uh, the Tag and Content Governance module, and we're on the Overview page. So to get there, you're just going to go down in the menu, click on the Tag icon, and uh, click on Overview. So right now we're looking at the last 30 days, and there's a variety of widgets here. One very interesting widget is the first versus third party activity. This shows you the slowest services by uh, activity. That means how long a particular service spent loading uh, on the site. You can see this information broken out by service, domain, and file, uh, as well as uh, there's a graphical view and a table view as well. Now you can also break that down by first and third party. Uh, so right now we're looking at our Blue Triangle website as the first party service. The other thing is, I'll just switch over to domains here to give you a look at this. Uh, the other thing is you can filter on sh only showing the domains that load before a, a specific performance metric milestone, for example, time to interactive. Right now we're, we're only looking at everything that loads prior to, time, to the time to interactive. So very cool widget there that you can play around with um, for your site's data. The next thing is the first versus third party composition widget. This is a breakdown, obviously, between the first party and the third party uh, domain activity, file size, as well as uh, the element count per page. Down below, there's SLA violations. Uh, we'll be walking through that here in a moment, as well as the service profiles. There's also top issues over here to the right. 
Um, so top issues are come from our issue tracker, um, which is uh, also known as our anomaly detection, and that is uh, basically machine learning that's automatically scanning your site's data for anomalies or issues that it sees. And it'll bubble them up here into this widget. You can click on them and drill in for, uh, for more information. And uh, finally, down below, there's an environment widget, which shows some helpful information, really high-level stuff like domains, pages, files. Uh, my MarkH demo site, currently, there's no RUM data. Uh, we just have synthetic data. So we have about six domains in synthetic with our synthetic data. Uh, one page, we're just measuring one page with a synthetic monitor. And uh, on that one page, there's 111 files. And that looks pretty consistent over time. We have five vendors with profiles, six services with profiles, and no configured SLAs yet. All right, so as I mentioned, how do you inventory the content on your site? Well, as you can see, Blue Triangle is doing this for you already. In this widget here, we're able to see over the past 30 days, all of the services that showed up on your site, all of the domains, and all of the files as well. Now, this is a, a fine place to look. There's also a page that we call inventory analysis uh, that's really designed to, to do this kind of inventorying. So on the inventory analysis page, you're, you're able to see services, domains, and files by site, by page, or by environment. Now, environment is a variable that you can set up with uh, real user data. It doesn't really apply for synthetic, so we won't worry about that right now. So I can switch here between domains and files, um, and I can also switch between the site and just a uh, one particular page. So here we're looking at all of MarkH demo, which is the name of our site. And uh, here we're looking at everything loading on the demo homepage. So this also has a time period. We're looking at the last one day. You can also do a variety of filtering on this data as well. Um, if you're interested in how particular, uh, maybe a particular device loads certain pages, uh, what content is loading and what content is not. Um, but this is a great place to go if you have uh, questions about you know, what content's loading on my checkout page, for example, or how do you confirm that, you know, Google Analytics is loading on the home page or whatever, right? Well, you can do that uh, using this page. Another great place to go is the service details. So I mentioned Google Analytics. I'm not sure that we have Google Analytics on this page, but I can show you uh, what the blue triangle analytics would look like. So if we click on blue triangle here on the service details page, we get a variety of information, the category analytics description about this analytics tag, uh, what pages it's on and what pages it's not on, as well as the, uh, the domains uh, and the resources or files uh, that this domain loads. You can also go up here and trend. Uh, you can check one of these boxes and trend that particular resource. So here we're looking at the, the JavaScript tag over time. All right, and there's more information down here below, but we won't uh, get too detailed uh, on this. I just wanted to show you the, the power of the service details page and answering questions like, you know, what pages are uh, specific services loading on, right? Now, if you just want a holistic view of, of all of the, the services and domains on your site, you can actually just go right on over to uh, the service profiles. So as you can see, uh, this, is, this is not a, a report page. This is just a table showing you all of the services that we've observed on your site since the beginning of uh, data collection. Now, you'll have a service status here of available um, or missing. You can also review the domains 
uh, using this button, um, or you can actually review all domains at the same time um, using that button above here. So this introduces a whole new topic here, which is um, going through and approving which domains uh, should be allowed to be loading on your site, right? And this really leads us into the conversation of a content security policy, which is a great thing to implement on your site um, as far as security goes. But if you're not quite there yet, a, another great uh, use case for the uh, reviewing all domains and approving or rejecting them is to build a whitelist. And you can create a whitelist in Blue Triangle and get notified when there are any violations to that whitelist observed in real user data or synthetic data. So as you can see, we've already, uh, the security admin and the tag management admin have already approved each of these domains. One of the cool things you can, you can see is over here to the left, there's a percentage of, of the Blue Triangle Index. This is about 6,000 sites that we're measuring on a uh, on a continuous basis. So for example, the, uh, the BTT tag is on 1.3% of all of the sites uh, that our index is measuring. It looks like there's 4,309 sites currently. All right. So this is the service profiles. Now, um, we haven't even gotten into uh, editing one of these. So um, what you're going to want to do, uh, once you get familiar with some of the, the tools I've shown you already, like the inventory analysis and the service details, um, I would recommend you go into the, the service profiles. I'm going to open this in a new tab. And as you can see, there's a ton of fields here that you can fill out. Okay, a business owner, a technical owner, technical contact, a department, you know, a risk assessment score if, if that is applicable. Um, you can also uh, submit a service security application. Um, I can show you how to do that here in a second. Actually, if I go back, let me add this to our table. So one of the things you can do is for example, um, Futurio, if we generate a new application, uh, what this does is it writes an email to a person at that service, to that vendor. Um, you can copy this and send it in an email and they'll get this uh, link here in the email to fill out all of the pertinent information about their uh, particular service. You know, what kind of data collection is happening? Are there, uh, you know, what PII data is this service tracking, for example? Uh, and then the associated domains, um, are there any subservices? This is a great question and a great thing to understand. For example, if you're loading an ad service, that ad service may be loading in other services itself, which we call uh, which is otherwise known as piggyback tags. So it's great to be able to understand uh, what, uh, you know, the answers to some of these questions here. All right, and they can just go ahead and submit that application. I would recommend you go through each of your services and certainly it's worthwhile to, to try and send these out and gather this information. Absolutely. All right, and then most of that information is down here. If they were to submit the application, you could import it into this page. Um, you can also um, try to fill out some of this information yourself. All right, so I won't go through each and every field here, but I would recommend that you, you know, go into your service profiles and see all the information that you can that you can uh, add to this. And um, you know, of course, once you're done, uh, there's a save button here, uh, right kind of in the middle of the screen, save profile. Um, and you'll be able to do that for each of your each of your services. So, you know, if you if you see a slowdown and you drill into 
uh, the data and you see that it is you know coming from Futurio, for example, uh, you can open that up, look at the you know who's the technical contact. We need to uh, contact this person and ask them to see what they can do about the performance slowness, right? So that's the service profiles. There's loads of use cases for, for service profiles, and I've just covered a couple of them. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move on now to SLAs. So SLA thresholds, you can get there here. Um, you can also get there under the tag and content governance uh, module here in the nav menu. And you can actually go down to uh, the SLA thresholds. So this is where you can configure an SLA. Um, the SLA status is where you can actually view an SLA. Now, the SLA status is going to be blank here uh, because we haven't uh, configured an SLA yet, right? Um, so we can actually just uh, click that link. We're back over at the SLA threshold page, and what we're going to do is create an SLA threshold. We'll just walk through this together. Um, let's do this for the blue triangle. And let's say the blue triangle JavaScript tag must be must load in quicker than 250 milliseconds on average. So how would you go about doing something like that? Well, usually the de the default settings are are great. We need to go and edit our filter group and change it to synthetic data. So the filter group is. Like it sounds, it's a, it's a group of filter options that you set and you name it uh, so that you can use it for other um, SLAs. So all we're going to do is just say synthetic data. Uh, we're not going to choose a page or anything like that. We're going to say the default there. You can also add or delete these um, using these buttons over here as well. All right, so let's try this again. We're going to look for... Reload the page as a matter of fact. We're going to choose blue triangle. Here we go. So now we can see uh, our default filter group is, is looking at synthetic data now. So now here we see uh, uh, the files coming from bttag.com, which is blue triangle, the service. Um, so we're going to say the, the btt.js file, the average duration. Uh, must be less than, uh, we're going to say 250 milliseconds. And with that, we're going to go ahead and save the new threshold. Um, that's going to show up here, internal versus external. Um, external is what you should uh, set it as if this is a, an actual service level agreement contractually uh, with the vendor or the service. Otherwise, if it's just an internal kind of goal or or something like that, you can set it as internal. Um, here we just have it set as uh, external for the sake of the example. And we're going to jump over here to the SLA status now. Awesome. So as you can see, we have uh, the blue triangle uh, SLA threshold filled into the screen now. And we can see that it's passing. So you can actually click uh, this button over here <clears throat> and drill into a little more information about um, this particular SLA threshold. In this case, it's showing that it's yellow because it's approaching the threshold where uh, the average over this, over this time period is 234 milliseconds, but it is exceeding the, met, the SLA value at certain times. So, uh, we're saying this this is something you should keep an eye on because it's very close to the SLA value. All right. Um, now, to get alerts, to get actually alerted on these, uh, what you can do is click this Create Alert uh, bell icon right here. You can uh, give the alert a name. Um, and then shoot, configure who, who it should be sent to. Um, we're going to leave all of these uh, blank, subject line, custom body, nope. 
Um, so we're going to choose synthetic. We're going to go down to the alert type and choose uh, SLA violations. Um, and then we're going to choose uh, the SLA threshold that we just created, which is the blue triangle SLA threshold. You can actually configure multiple conditions for a particular thre uh, SLA threshold. In this case, we have just the one, and we'll leave that uh, there. Uh, you, can, you can also uh, choose whether or not to be notified when the alert is cleared. All right. A little more information about uh, the alert configuration here, um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, click next. We're going to leave the rest of these things blank. Um, we're going to hit finish. And there we have our first uh, alert, actually, uh, and that's set up for our blue triangle SLA threshold. So you'll need to do that to get uh, notifications um, for when the SLA is, is being violated. Now, you can, all, you can just leave this thing up as a dashboard and view the status of your SLAs, uh, but I would recommend setting up the alert so you can actually get notified uh, via email or text message, pager duty, et cetera, whenever SLAs are being violated. All right, so the last thing I wanted to touch on, um, the hierarchy is a great one, but we don't have time for that today. Um, if you're interested in how the hierarchy works or have any questions about that, there is a, a past session that we've done, but the last thing I wanted to cover is the missing services. So I already, I configured a couple of these earlier because um, I wanted the, uh, the data to start flowing. Now, the idea here is just to kind of talk again at a high level. The idea here is we want to set up uh, alerts to notify us whenever a particular service falls off the site, or maybe it's not loading as often as it should be. Um, so the way you would do this is you would go down to the, uh, this, the service profiles down here. Let's pick on Futurio again. You're going to click this plus icon. Here we're saying uh, it must be the minimum percentage of time it, uh, we're observing the service should be 90% for ROM and 90% for synthetic. Let's say we want that to be 95% for synthetic. Um, it's going to clear after three hours. Rum doesn't matter for this, for my demo site, like I mentioned before, but just for the sake of the conceptual example here, you'll need to choose uh, how often you want to be notified. Um, I'm going to say hourly, and then I'm going to choose to send an email to me. Now. Once you set one of these up, it's going to show, uh, only then will it start collecting data about the availability of a particular service. So what after some time goes by, what it looks like is, um, is this. Let's try this again. Right. So googleapis.com is showing up 100% of the time for our demo site right now. And this is, this is what it looks like here. So if there are any dips in this availability, you'd be able to see that in this graph here. Uh, you can also see it, the information broken out by ROM and synthetic as well as each domain. So um, you know what, uh, what specific domain is it that's not uh, loading on my site, right? Um, in this case, obviously, everything is all all green. Um, everything's operating as it should be, but you would be able to see notifications about, you know, whenever over here in the log, or you obviously get the email about when services are missing on your site, right? So that's all I had to share with you guys today. I hope you learned some things about the tag and content governance module in Blue Triangle today. And I'm going to check the chat and the questions now and um, see if there's anything I can help answer for you guys. All right. So I see one question came in. I'll go ahead and get started with that. And feel free to uh, go ahead and type in any questions that you had.
All right. So the first one I see, um, you mentioned you can build a whitelist uh, with the domains and set up notifications for domains appearing that aren't on the list. How do you configure that? Right. So instead of the content security policy, uh, the other use case I mentioned for domain approval is um, a domain whitelist. So let me just uh, go back over to that page to give you an idea of what uh, what I'm talking about. So if you're on the service profiles, you can review all domains and you can uh, run through and approve or reject them. And that builds a whitelist. Um, so in order to get notifications, whenever that whitelist is violated, there's actually a setting in your profile. Um, if you go in here and edit your profile, scroll down, there is uh, under email notifications, there's a, a checkbox here to turn on or off the approved domain whitelist violations. And those just automatically are running uh, at all times and you'll, you'll be notified whenever there's, uh, there's violations. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. All right, everyone, uh, that's all we have for you today. Uh, thanks again for your time. And if you do have any more questions, uh, we're always happy to speak with you offline. Feel free to reach out to us anytime. You can reach us here in support at support at bluetriangle.com. Um, you can also reach us uh, in our help center. You can submit a request or a question, and that is help.bluetriangle.com. All right, guys, uh, thanks again for your time, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.